So this is the coolest thing ever, in my humble opinion, that there's a way to capture in non-technical language a sort of plain language description of a behavior and enrich that with some diagrams like the storyboards showing how that would visually appear and how the behavior would actually be implemented. And there's a way to take all of that stuff, which doesn't feel like code at all, and essentially have it become a runnable piece of code that both serves to automate what the user would actually do, like when the feature is actually implemented, and at the same time, serves as a correctness test, right? It exercises that code path in the system. So there are two key ideas that underlie Cucumber, which I think is maybe the coolest testing tool and certainly the best named that I've ever used. The first key idea is this correspondence between a user story and an acceptance test. Now, remember, there's a lot of kinds of tests. An acceptance test basically is validation. It's asking the user, here's the thing we built. Can you play around with it and confirm that it behaves the way you expect it, that it does what you want? So what if you could create a test from the customer-friendly user story? Because we've already described if the story is smart, a pretty specific sequence of actions and a pretty specific set of desired outcomes and what they would look like. So if you could do that, you would sort of get two different benefits. One of them is you could actually automate what the customer said they wanted to do. So that's the acceptance aspect. You're literally implementing the story that you worked on together. But you would also get an integration test because running this test against your real app would actually verify that the app is behaving in the correct way. So Cucumber as a tool does exactly this. It connects an almost plain language description of a test to code that actually makes that test happen. Because the Cucumber tests are written in close to plain language, it's not unconstrained plain language, but it's much, much closer to plain language than it is to code. That means that you could actually look at those scenarios, you could go over them with the customer. The customer could read a Cucumber test and pretty much understand what is supposed to happen, and yet, it is also an actual runnable test that you can use. And when I say it's almost plain language, what you're really going to be doing is, as you work with a customer, you will define a vocabulary of things that make sense in that customer's app. So for example, Rotten Potatoes is all about movies and reviews and ratings. So you can imagine that saying things like, when I add a certain movie, or given these movies already exist, the idea of a workflow of adding a movie is something that makes sense in that app, it wouldn't make sense in an app that, let's say, manages bank accounts. So the almost plain language means that you can't say whatever you want, but you're going to essentially define terms and words and phrases that make sense within the context of that app. And sometimes we call that a domain language for the app, not to be confused with a domain-specific language, which is a term of art in programming. So how do we do this? We have five keywords describing different steps, just like there's steps in a user story. There's given, which lets us say something about the state of the world. So the behavior that we're going to describe starts out with the world looking in a certain way. These certain movies already exist, or this user is logged in, or whatever. When are steps that actually do something. So they describe the user taking some action, like pushing a button, submitting a form, or something like that. Then is a step that verifies that certain post conditions are the case. And if the steps have to be extended, we could use and and but. So given this is true and this is true, but this is not true, that's one set of preconditions. Let's take a look at a really simple example for adding a movie because we can't get enough of this user story. So here is the feature. What's the feature? That's basically the name of the user story from that 3 by 5 index card. The user can manually add a movie. Here is one scenario for adding a movie. Why might a feature consist of more than one scenario? At least one reason is that there may be multiple ways the story could go. So when I gave the examples before of smart or not, and one example was user can search for a movie by title, questions that came up were, what if there are multiple matches? What if there are no matches? Does title have to do with, you know, what if they leave out punctuation? So there's like little things that to really specify the story and capture the corner cases, you might need to actually exercise multiple different versions of it. So we call each one a scenario. And the scenario has a number of steps, you know, aim for something like three to eight being typical. And the steps are exactly describing what the user would do if they were sitting in front of the app. So like, given I'm on the Rotten Potatoes homepage, well, presumably, we expect that they know how to navigate there. 
when I follow add new movie. So we're saying, okay, that page contains a link or a button or something that you can click on that says add new movie. And when they follow that, they should be on the create new movie page. You're scripting what the user would do, right? So th at this level of specificity. And by the way, this is why the level of specificity is important, right? If I'm going to add a movie, I have to pick some specific movie to run the test with. The goal here is this is something you could give to a person who doesn't know anything about the app and they could follow the script and they could say at the end, yes, it worked or no, it didn't work. Right. So you have to, you can't just say when I fill in title with the title of a movie, you have to pick a specific example. Right. So this is why getting the specific part right at the time you create the story saves you a lot of time. So how does this actually work? Like when I say, when I follow add new movie, you know, what does that even mean? So we'll talk about the bridging of these steps to actual code. And this is the second key idea that regular expressions, remember regular expressions? We love regular expressions. You're going to get to really, really like regular expressions. You're going to get good at them, just like doing 100 push-ups. But regular expressions are used to match the steps in that scenario to what are called step definitions. You'll usually hear us call them step defs for short. But basically, a step definition is a way to actually cause to happen the thing described by the step. So one of the steps in our example user story was when I follow add new movie, and somewhere in our step definitions, there has to be a step where the regular expression between the slashes matches something about what appears in the user story. And in that step definition, the capture group, remember back to your, your, I'm sure you all remember from regular expressions, but I'll refresh your memory just in case. That in a regular expression, when you have parentheses, they capture the pieces that match. So here, you're looking for a, the, the code in your um, scenario step has to match when I follow and then in between quotes, zero or more of any character. And the zero or more of any character, when that step matches, is going to be captured as the parameter name. And now I can have a block of code that uses the value of name to do something, to follow the link. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So basically what Cucumber is doing is for each line in your scenario, it's trying to find a step definition whose regular expression matches that line. And in case you were wondering, yes, it is an error for multiple matches to occur. And Cucumber will say, I don't know which of these is supposed to be. You know, please make the step definitions more specific. And one thing you'll see as you start working with Cucumber and do the uh, initial chips uh, about Cucumber is that there is an additional gem called Cucumber Rails Training Wheels that provides a few basic step definitions that are very common in apps like this. So when I follow blah is a built in step definition or provided by the training wheels. It's a step definition that looks for a link that has that text and clicks it. There's also things like when I drop down this menu and select something, when I submit this form, I'll show you a few more of those in a moment. But right now, this is the, the key ideas that I want you to remember. The scenario is a bunch of steps that begin with given, when, then, and, or but. The step definitions is a file of code where the regular expressions are going to be matched up with what the scenario steps are. By the way, the keywords when, then, given, but, and, those are actually aliases of the same method. They are there for readability, but they are treated exactly the same internally. So in my step definition, if my scenario file actually said, given I follow add new movie, instead of saying when I follow, everything would still work. So, and so you might ask, well, then what's the point of having different words? It's for readability. Right? When you put given in front of something, what you are telling the person reading the code is, this is setting up a precondition. When you put when in front of something, you're telling the reader, this is taking action. This is the thing that the test is about. This is the behavior that the test is trying to capture. And when you put then in front of something, you're saying, this is where I'm going to check certain post conditions after the when steps have happened. So in terms of code, doesn't matter. But in terms of readability, it matters quite a bit. And I can tell you anecdotally, you know, in a large, real, complicated app, there's going to be hundreds of scenarios and thousands of steps. And I actually have gone back to, you know, code that I wrote two or three years ago in an app. And by reading the scenarios, it reminds me of what the code is supposed to do. The code is old enough that I would, you know, I either have to go parse the actual source code to see what it's doing, or I have these almost plain language descriptions of the behavior. And that makes it a lot faster for me to remember, oh, oh, that's what the code is supposed to do. Now I can go read the code and figure out how I'm going to improve it.